Sky Kid is the second part in the Super Cassette Vision finale. And just like all middle episodes of trilogies, it's the best one. Sky Kid is a great encapsulation of what the Super Cassette Vision was. All of the system's strengths and weaknesses are on full display here. As you might expect with this trilogy of Namco games, Sky Kid was initially a Namco arcade game. It was a modest success for Namco, and it was quickly followed up by a Famicom port. And similar to the arcade version, the Famicom port did pretty well for Namco. The Super Cassette Vision version of Sky Kid followed just a few months after the Famicom version. So this is a case where the same game for two competing platforms was available at the same time. Just like the other Namco games for the Super Cassette Vision, Sky Kid is extremely rare and extremely expensive. Copies commonly sell for more than 20,000 yen. Sky Kid has the player step into the shoes of a World War I ace pilot, either the Red Baron or Blue Max, depending on if they're Player 1 or Player 2. You have to fly a series of missions in which you'll take off, fight through a horde of enemies, pick up a bomb, and destroy some strategic target. Finally, land safely at a friendly airfield. Sky Kid is a shoot 'em up, and it's one of the rare ones that scrolls right to left. Hitting the left button will fire your gun, and the shot gets angled depending on if you're moving up or down at the time. The right button will make you do a barrel roll. You're invulnerable while you're doing the barrel roll, unless you fly into terrain, and it can let you cover a lot of ground quickly. The barrel roll has another function. If you get hit, instead of just exploding and dying right there, you start spiraling into the ground. And if you can mash the right hand button fast enough, then you'll do a barrel roll and pull out of that spin. This means that if you fly close to the top of the screen, you've got a decent chance of recovering from a hit. But a lot of the most dangerous attacks will come at you from the ground, and if you want to shoot those targets, you'll have to be close to them. Plus, being close to the ground helps a lot with bombing. While you're flying through the stage, sometimes you're told to pick up a bomb, and the bomb will just be sitting out on the ground. You fly into it, and then carry it off. While carrying the bomb, your plane moves more slowly, and you lose the ability to do the barrel roll. Part of that is because the right button now drops the bomb. If you get hit while carrying the bomb, then you also lose it. Once you have the bomb, you'll have to fly a little bit further to one of the targets, and ideally release the bomb so it hits square in the middle, destroying the whole thing. If you fail to destroy the target, it's no big deal, you go on to the next mission. The targets are just extra points. But it still feels really good to drop that bomb right in the center and see the whole thing go up. There are some special obstacles you'll encounter on stages, where if you perform a loop around them, something special will occur. The signs are a big one of these, but the dancing girls at the end of missions are not. That was something that was in other versions of Sky Kid, but isn't in the Super Cassette Vision version. When you're playing, you do have to be cautious about taking off and landing. If you're not pushing up on the stick when you start, you're going to slam into terrain. And if you miss the runway at the end, then you're also going to lose a life. That 1-up, by the way, is just referring to how you're player 1. You don't get an extra life for completing the stage. While the stages in Sky Kid start out fairly straightforward, the terrain rapidly becomes more and more of a challenge. You'll have to avoid mountains, skyscrapers, and giant billboards. If you're not sure if you can fly through something, you can shoot it, and if it'll stop a bullet, then it'll stop your plane. At the end of every stage, you get bonuses based on how many things you've shot down, and these are tiers rather than a multiplier. The bonuses wind up being pretty significant too, which will help boost that score and get you the extra lives you need. Sky Kid has two difficulty levels, Amateur and Pro, and as far as I can tell, the only difference between the two is how many lives you get. Playing Sky Kid on the Super Cassette Vision makes me ask one vital question. Why didn't they make more shoot 'em ups? The one technological edge that the Super Cassette Vision had as a platform was its very impressive sprite handling capabilities. It could pump out and track way more sprites than the Famicom could. And you see that in Sky Kid, where the stages are far more busy than the ones on the Famicom. 
there's veritable clouds of biplanes that swarm you. It makes the action a lot more frantic than it was on the Famicom. If you just put the two games side by side and looked at them, the Super Cassette Vision wins hands down. Let's just, uh, not look at any of the other things. The audio is the major problem with this version of Sky Kid. The Super Cassette Vision might have been overloaded with sprite handlers, but the sound channels were extremely limited, and as a result, the music cuts out any time there's a sound effect. If you take a shot, blow something up, do a loop, whatever, the music just cuts out. And Sky Kid's music is one of the more memorable things in the game. It's definitely the most lasting impact that the game has had. And of course, Sky Kid suffers from the mushy Super Cassette Vision controllers. Not so much when you're firing your main gun, but when you're trying to mash to recover from a spin, that light controller shifting in your hand every time you try to push the button makes it way more difficult to save yourself. It also screwed up my timing during bombing runs, where sometimes the first button push didn't quite register. Still, even with those flaws, this is a pretty good port of Sky Kid. And it's among the best Super Cassette Vision games. If Epoch had been cranking them out like this the whole time, well, they probably still wouldn't have beaten the Famicom, but maybe they wouldn't have been in such a distant third place.